All right, welcome back, Hananiga. Algebra 1, Section 8.4. We're going to come back and do 8.3 in a little bit, but we're going to do 8.4 next. Graphing again. So we did graphing in Sections 8.1 and 8.2, so now we're going to graph again, but this time we're going to be graphing a little bit differently. This is called vertex form. Um, we were doing vertex form before, but you really kind of didn't know it. So here we go. little exploration here. We're going to fill in the chart here. We're going to plug in numbers. So... Let's say I plugged in 4 for x, okay, and we're going to get 7s because 4 minus 2 is 2 squared would be 4 plus 3 would be 7. And let's say I plug 3 in for x, I'm going to get 4. And I'm going to plug 2 in for x, I'm going to get 3. I'm going to plug 1 in for x, I'm going to get 4. Now, let's talk about the 1 in for x. 1 minus 2 is negative 1 squared is positive 1 plus 3 would be 4. And then 0, you're going to get 7. I'm going to fill out the next one, and I'm going to be a little bit quicker with this one. This one's negative 2, negative 1, and positive 2. So again, plugging those in. What do you notice about the middle one? I'm going to put it in a different color for you, but the 2, 3, and the negative 1, negative 2. What do you notice about the numbers on either side of that? They're the same, right? So what ends up happening is the vertex is the number that makes the parenthesis equal zero, or sometimes referred to as the opposite of what's in the parenthesis. So notice that positive two, positive three is the vertex point, and negative one, negative two is the vertex point. So if it's in vertex form, you can actually come up with the vertex just by looking at the equation. So here's the next one. Notice you got that parenthesis squared plus 5. So guess. All right, so the vertex is negative 3 for x, positive 5 for y. So it's the value that the x value that makes the parenthesis 0 and then the number on the outside of the parenthesis. So let's do a couple more. Negative 1. Now, if there's no number outside here, it's negative 1, 0. So the one right below that, positive 2 and negative 5. Negative 3, positive 1. And then the last one here, positive 3 for x, positive 4 for y. So again, vertex form. Now, the axis of symmetry, I see in the directions, it says also state the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is always the x value of the vertex. If I draw a vertical line through the vertex, it's always going to go through the x value of the vertex. So remember, the axis of symmetry is always the x value. Domain is always the y value. So the y value changes with the domain, or excuse me, the y value changes with the range, not domain. I apologize. So the x value of the vertex is the axis of symmetry. The y value of the vertex is what's going to affect the range. Find the vertex. Then plot four points. Choose values of greater than or less than the vertex, and then draw a curve through the points. So let's start with the vertex. Positive 4 for x, 0 for y, because there's nothing being added or subtracted. So I put that in the middle of my XY chart, and then I pick numbers that are bigger and numbers that are smaller than that. Plug 5 in for X, you're going to get 2. Plug 6 in for X, you're going to get 8. 3 in for X. Now, you're going to get a negative 1, but when you square it, it's positive 1 times 2. And then 2 minus 4 would be negative 2 squared is positive 4. So graphing those points, we have the point 4, 0, 4, 0, 5, 2, 6, 8. Sorry about that. 2, 8. Connect the points. And now let's answer the questions. The axis of symmetry is always the x value of the vertex. The domain is always all real numbers, so you can have ARN or the symbol for all real numbers. Now, I said in the last slide, the range is affected. The range goes with the Y value of the vertex, so the Y value is greater than or equal to 0, because that is the Y value of the vertex. And now they want me to compare. 
Anytime you have a parenthesis, translations always describe the vertex. And in this case, the vertex went to the right three. And that is called a translation to the right four. I don't know if I said three before, but it went to the right four. And then the two comes from what we talked about previously. That is a vertical stretch because the number is bigger than one vertical stretch by two. So again, using our words here a little bit to compare. Next one, vertex three, positive one. So X is three, positive one. Put numbers in for X that are a little bigger and a little smaller than three. You put four in, you're going to get two. You put five in, you're going to get five. Same with the bottom, two in, you're going to get two. And one in, you're going to get five. So three, positive one, two, five. So connecting the dots. Axis symmetry is always the X value of the vertex. The domain is always all real numbers. Range now. Range is always greater than or less than. In this case, it's greater than or equal to the Y value of the vertex. And now let's talk about our compare. Translation, translation. So those numbers being inside the parentheses and those numbers outside the parentheses are translations. Again, translations describes the vertex. So the vertex went to the right three. So it's a translation right three. And it's a translation. And if you only want to write it once, that's okay too. Translation up one. So the number inside the parentheses, the translation left and right. The number outside the parentheses is a translation up or down. Hit the pause button and try this one all by yourself. All right, welcome back. So now, vertex is at negative one, eight. Putting numbers in, it's like zero and one would be bigger. Negative two and negative three would be smaller. And so you're going to get zero, you're going to plug that in, you're going to get five. One, you're going to plug that in, and you're going to get negative four. Negative two is going to be five, and negative three is going to be negative four. And those of you with graphing calculators, I'm going to show that here in just a second. I'm actually going to do this problem on a graphing calculator just to show you what you could be capable of. So one, negative four, zero, five. Whoops, let me try this again. One, negative four, zero, positive five. Negative one, eight, and so on. So I graph the points. X of symmetry is always the X value of the vertex. And yes, you need the X equals part because we're talking about a line. All real numbers for the range or for the domain and Y is less than or equal to eight. Now for the compare part. The vertex is the translation. So we're talking about a translation to the left one. So that's the negative one. And up eight. That's the. So that is a description of the vertex. Then we have a three out in front. So that is a vertical stretch by three. And then we have a negative out in front. So that's a reflection on the X axis. So now I'm going to pull out a graphing calculator. And I know a lot of you have a graphing calculator. And we probably don't use it enough. Like we need to, to show you more tricks on a graphing calculator. So let's go to the graphing calculator. We're going to type this in. Negative 3, X plus 1, quantity squared, plus 8. So graphing calculator. We're going to go to Y equals. And we're going to type that in. So negative. Please use the negative sign down by the decimal point. 3. X plus one quantity, so parentheses squared, plus eight. So again, all I did so far is just type it in. And I want to graph. And by the way, you could have done this for all the ones that we did previously. So the graphing calculator could be very beneficial. Let's hit graph. There it is. So it looks very similar to the one. Now, looking at the graph helps. But really, the place where this really could help is if I hit second and graph. This will give me an XY chart 
So the XY chart that I did by hand, I now could have done with a graphing calculator. And notice negative 1, 8 is where the symmetry happens. So that's where the vertex would occur because the number on either side of that is symmetrical. So anytime you have a symmetrical point, that is where the vertex is located. Now we're going to do everything in reverse. I want to know what the equation would be if we had a vertex at 1, 5. Well, let's start with this, that. So y would equal a x minus 1 squared plus 5. So there's the vertex. I just put the vertex into the vertex form. Now I have another point. So I'm going to put negative 3 in for y and positive 3 in for x. This will allow me to come up with what a is. So now take what's in the parentheses and square it. So 3 minus 1 would be 2 squared. And solve. So subtracting 5 and dividing by 4. So A is negative 2. So answer time. Y equals negative 2. That's the A value that I just calculated. X minus 1 squared. That's the X value of the vertex. Plus 5. That's the Y value of the vertex. So I wrote an equation in vertex form given the vertex and giving a point on the, on the parabola. So you try this one by yourself. Go ahead and hit pause. All right, welcome back. So y equals a x plus 3 quantity squared. That's a negative 3 for your x of your vertex, and then positive 5. Now I'm going to plug in 0 for x and negative 14 for y. Again, do what's in the parentheses first and then square it. So 0 plus 3 is 3 squared would be 9a and then solve if i subtract 5 i get negative 19 divide by 9 a equals negative 19 ninths so now writing the equation y is equal to negative 19 ninths x plus 3 quantity squared plus 5. Your homework assignment tonight is out of the book. Let's go back to the first page. There it is, page 446. If you have any questions, please make sure that you talk to your teacher, and good luck.